It's a beautiful day here in Nova Scotia. It's mid, well, just a little past mid-April. And uh, it's one of those days that I really felt I had to get out. I'll explain more in a little while. But the theme of today's outing will be based on the quote from John Muir, and into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul. So that's basically what I'm trying to do today. And as I said, I'll explain more. However, I also have another plan. I think something hopefully you will enjoy. And that is, I came out to make myself some lunch. And since I can't have a fire, I can still have, at least in Nova Scotia, I can still have a barbecue, meaning charcoal. So I brought along that Chinese folding wood stove that I tested recently, and I'll put a link either up in the corner or at the end of the video if you want to see the review of that. But what I noted at that time is we are under a full fire ban here in Nova Scotia as a result of the state of emergency. I have no argument with that. I understand the reasons. But we still are allowed to go into the wilderness areas, not into the parks, but into the wilderness areas. And I can still use a few things to cook with, like alcohol, propane, butane canisters, white gas, and charcoal. So that's what I'm going to do. Cook up some lunch with my ch charcoal in the stove. If you're interested in seeing what I come up with and understand the reasons why I'm here today, keep watching. Okay, I'm going to make this as short as I can. Uh, I don't want this to be the focus of this video, uh, but it is something I have to talk about for a minute. By the time you see this video, I am sure most of you, if not all of you, will be aware of the horrific tragedy that we have suffered here in Nova Scotia. For me, it's only three days, not even three days. A lone gunman, gunman went on a shooting rampage through multiple locations through central Nova Scotia, northern Nova Scotia. And at the time of this recording, there are 19 people dead. And the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, expect that death toll to rise because there are multiple crime scenes that have yet to be explored properly because they, uh, they were burnt to the ground. I'm not going to talk about why or how. I'm not going to analyze the situation. And I ask you to refrain from doing the same. All I really want to say So all I really want to say, and this is hard, is to keep the families of the victims in your thoughts and your prayers. An RCMP officer was killed as well, responding, doing her job. Another officer, RCMP officer was wounded in the exchange of gunfire. Uh, this uh, hits me especially hard because as most of you aware, I was a police officer for 36 years. But this is just beyond all comprehension. And, and that's the reason I'm out today. To go into the forest, to lose my mind and find my soul. It's not about social distancing. It's about 
mental distancing from the situation as it is right now. And things have been complicated. I mean, this the, the, right now we have the dubious distinction of having the largest mass murder in all of Canada history. Not something I want to be known for in Nova Scotia. But to compound it, we're in the middle of the COVID crisis and we're not permitted to gather. There will be no funerals. There will be no mourning, no candlelight vigils. We can't compound a bad situation by risking the spread of COVID-19, which may end up in even more deaths. All we can do is mourn and work to show our solidarity. So on that note, people are coming up with creative ways to do so. One suggestion made by our Premier was that we all display a portion of our provincial Nova Scotia tartan. So you would have seen this in the opening shots. This is just a small ribbon of our Nova Scotia tartan, which I'll wear on me for quite some time, of course. Okay, enough of that. I have a lot of mental processing to do, a lot of mourning, a lot of grief, and I'm not directly affected. I didn't know anybody. Actually, that's not true. I did know the police officer. I had met her in the course of my duties, but I, I didn't know her well. But I would just ask again that you keep us in your thoughts and your prayers. And if you want to provide comments of support, please do so. But I'll tell you right now, if anybody makes a comment out of a critical or political nature, I'm going to delete it. So just comments of support. That's all I'll accept on, the, on, on this video if you want to mention this. Okay. Time to move on. I'm still not even halfway to my location where I want to set up for lunch. But uh, I'm in no rush. It's a beautiful day. Follow along. All right. I think it's lunchtime. So I am back in the location I call my new campsite. It's not really a campsite so much as it's just a small clearing in the woods that the one I've been looking for for so long. I finally found it and here I am. Uh, I've been doing a little work just clearing up around it. You know, remade a, went to the shore, found a number of stones, made a fire pit that won't get used for a while, at least not with an active fire. But once the fire ban is off, I'll, I think this will make a good fire pit. I've lined the bottom of it. I dug down into mineral soil, then I lined the bottom of it with some stones. Don't worry, not wet river stones, but dry stones. And uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty good sized fire pit here. But today it's going to be used with a charcoal stove. So this is the stove that I tested recently, the one that my friend Wayne from Kajika Life has loaned me. Geez, if you ever ask for it back, I may have to buy one. I'm having fun with it. So this is what it looks like in the inside. And when I did the original video, I had commented that based on the design of the stove, that huge fire grate inside there, the tall nature of it, the fact that I get a pan to put underneath to catch ashes and coals, that this would make a great charcoal stove. And I'm not sure this wasn't meant intended to be a charcoal burner primarily. I mean, it's almost identical to some of the square ones that you can purchase, classable square charcoal chimneys used for starting charcoal before you put them in your barbecue. So that's the way I'm going to use it today. Put in the uh, ash pan on the bottom. A little trick. There we go. That's fine. Bring it around. Find a nice stable place for it. I had a stable place for it the other day. There we go. That'll work. And uh, I'm going to use a piece of commercial fire starter for it. Break this into two pieces. Get that lit. Put it down inside. And I have chunk charcoal that I'm going to be putting in this today. I could have used briquettes and, and I did try this for briquettes and it does work. I personally prefer chunk charcoal, natural charcoal. Uh, reasons? I guess a couple. One would be the fact that it, uh, in my opinion, 
it burns hotter, although at the same time it burns faster. But uh, I think it burns cleaner. And the only reason I say that is, is that the briquettes uh, have a binder to help them stay together. I, I suspect it's safe, it's non-toxic, but if I can avoid having anything affect my food, then why not? Let's see if I can't get this fire starter lit. Put it down inside. Same thing with this one, or the other half of it, I should say. There you go. I'm going to give those a second to catch on, and then I'll uh, start putting the charcoal in. So what I'm going to be cooking today are sausages. A couple of... Uh, Oktoberfest sausages that I had put in my vacuum sealer, frozen, well defrosted now. Nice way to transport them. I'll be use barbecuing those on top of the grill that comes with the stove. But at the same time, that's not the only thing I'm going to be having. I decided to bring along one of these tasty bites. They're pretty much a meal in a bag. This one is Indian chana masala, if I'm saying that correctly, which is basically slow cooked Chickpeas, slow cooked with onions, tomatoes, and spices. It's a, a vegetarian meal. This one is very mild in terms of it doesn't have a lot of spices. But what I can do with these, what I like doing with these is putting them right in a pot of water and bringing the pot of water to a boil, heating it right in the bag, and then dumping it from the bag into my bowl or plate or what I'm going to eat it off of. And uh, I'm going to add the sausages to that, so it won't be a vegetarian meal anymore. But uh, to cook this, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it on top of the charcoal burner. I could, quite easily. Uh, I just want to be able to see if I can accomplish two things at the same time. I also brought out my Trangia knockoff and my Firebox Nano so I can set it up for alcohol and use one of those Camelwell 1.2 liter pots. Just a little trick that I want to show you. The lid from my 10 centimeter zebra pot fits on like it was made for it. Now, why bother? Well, the reason I did that is I like the fact that the, the uh, zebra has a raised, raised pot lid. That gives me a little bit more height in the pot for when I put this down inside. I can get the lid shut down on top of it so it'll heat a little faster. So that's the only reason I did that, but it's a cool little trick. Uh, and the reverse works as well. You can put the lid that comes with the chemo wheel on top of the 10 centimeter pot. All right, my fire starter is going well. Trying to put in some chunk charcoal. So this is what I mean by chunk charcoal. I'm sure natural charcoal, most people will be aware of it. And I had to go through my bag, which I'm just about out of, and look for some of my larger pieces so that they wouldn't fall through the holes in the bottom of the stove here. Now this is gonna take a few minutes for that charcoal to light. But man, once it gets going, that's a big piece. There's plenty of heat to cook on, plenty of heat to boil water. All right, that's enough, at least for now. So what I'll do is when the charcoal is well engaged and I'm ready to put the sausages on, I'll bring it back. And in the meantime, I'm going to set up my Trangia knockoff, my Alex burner, to bring the water to a boil to heat up the other part of the meal and I may uh, just get it started and then put that pot on top of of the stove as well yeah okay yeah <laughs> that's hot that is hot all right let's see if I can get my sausages out here put them right on they're a little wet but Mm, oh yeah, I can smell the uh, the heat already getting to the sausage. So these are our Oktoberfest sausages. That's what all I had. I, I had uh, some beautiful spicy Italian sausages from our local market, but I ate them all. So <laughs> this is all I could find left in the freezer today. Time to get out and stand in the lineups to get into the grocery stores, I guess. Ah, uh, you can see they're starting to cook already. Now, if I had taken another minute or two, I would have made myself a pair of tongs for turning these because of course I forgot to bring them but a pair of bushcraft tongs are easy to fashion 
But what I did make was just a fork, just a little fork out of a Y stick, and it's going to have to be my device for rolling these over, making sure I don't tip over the bar that barbecue, of course. I think I need to get a rock under the edge of it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. This is hotter than uh, even I expected it to be. This is great. And just over to the side here, let's see if I can show you. There's my uh, camel wheel with that lunch down inside of it, sitting on top of the Alex stove inside of the nano burner, or the nano stove, nano, Alex burner inside of a nano stove. And it, uh, it has been boiling and simmering just lowly there, so that's doing well. But uh, this is more about this beautiful site right here, sausages on top of a barbecue. I think I gotta get those turned over. Okay, I'm gonna work on these for a little while, and when they're pretty close to cooked, then I'll bring it back. All right, I gotta tell you, that's, it's only been a minute or two, and, uh, maybe a couple minutes, since I uh, put these on the barbecue, and they're done. Done, done. Maybe some might consider that overdone, but uh, that's just a nice, they're still nice and moist, still leaking out nicely. That gives you an idea just how much heat that barbecue will, or barbecue, the charcoal will put out in that stove. And what I'm going to do is I put out my trangia, save the alcohol. Now I'm putting the pot up on top of the barbecue there because that'll boil water easily enough. And now it's time to cut these little beauties up and add the rest of my lunch to it. So I'm going to do that right in the bowl. Cooked? Oh yeah, nicely cooked. I forgot to bring a cutting board, so I'm doing it right in my Kapilka bowl. Oh yeah, they look good. I could do it right on this piece of wood. Yeah, that's even better. Except for the one that rolled off. Okay, that's looking good. Now, how am I going to get that out? I'm going to need a glove for this. Pot off the barbecue. I think I can show you this steaming inside there. So that's all you really need to do with these packaged meals. Um, just a word of caution, I've mentioned this before, but uh, the foods, the bags are food safe on the inside, but I don't know about the outside. I wouldn't use that, what looks to appears to be clean water, I wouldn't use that for making my coffee or tea with, because the inks may well be toxic. I don't see anything coming off of the bag, but why risk it? I'm just gonna refill this pot up in a second with some clean lake water and put it back on the, on the uh, barbecue there to heat up some water for coffee. But that looks great. And the trick will be, of course, opening it. Nice tear top. Steam coming out from the inside. This is a giant meal. Look at the size of this meal. Hot, too. This may not be a spicy version, but it smells pretty good. I did bring along my spice kit to try. <laughs> now that's a hearty meal. But the proof, as they say, is in the taste. So I've got to give that a second to cool down and I'll refill my pot full of water. And we'll do a taste test. And let's see if I can give you a close-up of what I'm having for lunch today. I know it's not everybody's dish, but... Uh, it's a real feast for me right now. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> you know, one of those are one of the easiest meals I think to prepare is to go to the grocery section of your store. I get some of these even at a dollar store. 
those tasty bike meals and there's a few other brands as well but a uh, little different you know you can get them in different things the chickpeas but the masala is quite tasty especially when you put in that nice barbecue sausage in there with it mmm I like things fairly spicy. This has a mild spice flavor on it. I did bring my spice kit. I didn't add anything to it. I don't think it needs to. I don't want to uh, really mask the taste of that barbecued sausage, which worked out so well. Mm. They're so easy to cook. Now, mind you, you do have the weight of that bag, but the convenience of having that bag, and again, rinsed out, put back in a, a plastic bag so you don't get anything left in your pack. The weight has been reduced. There's no cans to, to carry out. No weight of the can to carry in as far as that goes. Just the weight of the meal. Yeah, uh, that, they're hard to beat as far as convenience goes. And they're cost effective well, as well. They're, they're not an expensive meal. I, I don't know what I paid for those. I paid a dollar fifty for some of them. That one I'm not quite sure what I paid for. Under three dollars, I believe, though, for most of them. I'd recommend them. I've talked about them before, but I'd recommend them to anybody who's interested in just a convenient meal. Uh, it takes a lot less fuel to heat that up. Well, I don't know. That's a good question. Is it easier to boil water to rehydrate a... Well, one of the freeze-dried meals would be quicker, but much more expensive. And I can't say it would taste any better than this. But I used to... Uh, five minutes, maybe ten minutes worth of alcohol to bring that to a boil and at that point it just needs to sit in the boiling water. I don't know, it probably works out to about the same so I think probably the biggest thing is the convenience and the flavor. I'm sitting back, there's not a breeze, the water looks like like a mirror there's not a cloud. I am in the trees right now, a little shady, but I'm going to get out and sit in the sun for a few minutes when I make my coffee. It don't get no better than this. And that's when I'll bring it back, when it's time to make coffee. So it, it just wouldn't be right to top that meal off as quick and as convenient as it was with a quick and convenient and easy instant coffee. I have to have some good coffee to go with that meal. It just it just wouldn't seem you know the right thing to do. Doesn't mean it can't be quick and convenient. You can make coffee. I've shown some rather elaborate ways of making coffee, but there are some simple ones. Again, I'm using it always starts with good coffee. I'm still using the Rampage coffee. I did grind this this morning. So I'm not grinding it in the wood. It's just one more thing to bring with me. But a simple pour-over device. Now this is a, people I think have asked when this showed up in a video not long ago. Um, this comes under different brands. It's a silicone pour-over device. This one I got at the dollar store for one dollar in the camping section last year. Not concerned about the quality. All it's intended to do is to hold the filter. And maybe the one downside of it is you do have a paper filter. Now, if you have an open fire, you can always dispose of it and burn it up. Uh, the grounds I will bury. The paper filter won't deteriorate, so I am going to have to pack that out, but that's quite okay. A nice heaping spoon of coffee. That's probably easily two tablespoons. That should be enough. It also occurs to me that I did not say why I brought the camel well, even with the, the top off of the zebra pot. Why didn't I just bring the zebra pot when the, the lid would have given me the raised lid and everything else? Well, the reason is, is I wanted the spout on the camel well for pouring. It just makes it a little bit more controlled than, yes, I can pour and I, and I, I have a locking handle on the, on the, zebra but it's a lot easier to pour if you've got a spout so a little bit to wet the coffee kind of let it soak up a little bit of the 
water without actually filling up the whole filter. And then, just a st slow, steady stream of coffee into the center, working my way around. Oh, the smell. Beautiful. I'll let that work its way down and see if I need any on top of that. So I've gotten some good responses to the video I released. Uh, it'll probably be a couple of weeks uh, ago when once this one's released on using the mocha pot to make coffee as part of that tag challenge from Lone Wolf 902 and a lot of people responded that they had not considered using the mocha pot in the woods but that they were going to and uh, that's great I mean that's what it was all about was just to show another way of making coffee in the woods something yes it took a little bit more time but uh, it, ca it came out with a nice superior cup of coffee one question that i had to answer for a few people because obviously i didn't make it clear enough in the video was why i preheated my water rather than putting the cold water in the bottom how much coffee am i making oh that's still good instead of putting the cold water in and just putting it right on top of the on the alcohol stove so maybe it just helps to clarify it. The reason is contact time with heat. Uh, coffee, it takes a certain temperature to extract the best part of the coffee out of it, but too much contact time with heat and too high a heat creates, causes the coffee to go bitter. It would be a lot like if you uh, used a French press, put your coffee in, put your water in, and you're, ideally it's only about four minutes steep time. But if you left it there, it's not that it, you ruin the coffee, it's just that it will continue to get stronger, and maybe that's what you want. But most people's opinion, it also starts to get bitter. So that's the only reason why I preheated my water, was just to prevent the bitterness. Now, in truth, I'm probably being you know, fussy about, about that. Uh, the convenience of just putting it in and putting it right on the burner probably overrides the, the extra work it took to preheat the water and, and uh, do it that way. It's just, was like I said uh, during the video, it was just meant to bring it to the next level for those who are a little bit fussy about their coffee. All right, that's just about drained out. And when it is, I am going to enjoy a nice cup of coffee on this beautiful sunny spring day. It's like a painting. It really is. It's, it's just amazing. And I know it's unfair for me to stand here and say that to you while I'm sitting here on the edge of the lake with a cup of coffee in the sunshine. So what I'll do is I'll enjoy a little bit of my coffee and I'll give you a walk around just to show you my, my scene and what my, I'm calling my campsite or my new location for, for filming videos. Uh, I know a few people have asked, so why not? I'll, I'll, I can show you that. I'm still exploring it, still finding out what's available to me. I did bring one of my tarps today to see if I can do a setup here for an overnight. But uh, before I do that, I've got to sit here and enjoy this in the sun. So I promised you a little tour around the site now where I'm set up, and uh, that's what I'll do for you. So I'm going to be carrying the camera around. Hopefully it's not too shaky for you. So this is the fire pit that I built. A bit in shadow right now. You'll see more of that in the future. You can see that the folding wood stove, Chinese wood stove, is in the center of it right now. Tripod sitting over for that eventual day when I can have a fire. I'll just pan around the site here before going down to the water's edge. It's a little thinner than a lot of the areas that I go through, which is kind of nice, not quite so much bushwhacking. And the ground is a little bit more clear. If there's one thing you've probably noticed about my videos is that the wilderness area that I go in has a lot of rocks. You probably see them in the background back there. 
and the soil is quite thin, making it a you know nice rugged area to be in, but not a great area for camping in or setting up. Over here I have my hammock chair. It was facing into the sun. I can move it anywhere around that tree and face it in towards the water if I'm looking to, but uh, when I have my lunch I wanted it to face the sun. Those hammock chairs are amazing. That's a homemade one, but my friend Jeep at Econo Challenge makes them for sale if you're interested, and I think I will put a link to his site and his channel in the uh, video description or show notes. Now, there's a stack of dead wood there. That predates me. Somebody had found this place before I did, and they had cut quite a bit of it, or, and I just collected up what was laying around. Some of it fallen off of the trees. They had a fire pit literally sitting on top of those roots down there, and I didn't think that would be safe even during the winter. Well, during the winter it would be safe, but I decided to remove the fire pit and rebuild it actually on a rock, next to a rock, to give it more safety and I'm going to fill the base up with sand from the lake you know like gravel so let's move down to the lake and I apologize for any wind noise now see if I can't shield the microphone a little bit because this is what it's all about is this view so hopefully you'll be able to hear me so as I've mentioned before I'm on Susie Lake not in this video but I've mentioned another video Susie Lake which is within the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes wilderness area and when I look in that direction I'm looking north to northeast and that is not the shoreline on the far side of the lakes those are two islands probably right in the center of where you're looking is the the channel that goes between the islands those are two islands not even in the center of the lake. The lake is much bigger. If I went around that point right here to the left, I, I go all the way north, and the lake uh, extends quite a ways up there. But this little spot is just a little alcove off of the lake that's providing me just a little piece of heaven right now. It's early spring here, but uh, you know, I, as you would be aware if you watch my videos, I do like to look for wild edibles and medicinals and whatever else I can find. So I keep my eyes on the ground sometimes looking for things. And as I expected to find, not a lot right here, cranberries. Cranberries over the winter. So someone might ask, is that still good, even though it's been sitting here all winter under ice and snow? Let me check it out. Yes, it is. I think it's a little sweeter than it would have been in the fall. Mm, that was nice. Tart, like cranberries are. I did see some other things in here. What else did I see? There is a lot of wintergreen on the ground, and I did see some wintergreen berries. The little animals love those, so that's probably where most of them went. So this is an area for me to explore and to set up and maybe come back, do some overnights. That's my plan anyway. And just relax. Let me see if there's anything else I can find to show you. Looks like we have some Canada geese taking up residence in the lake. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed following along and watch me make some lunch using charcoal in that Chinese folding wood stove. You know, it works really well for that. Actually, I think I like using it with charcoal better than I do with wood. Um, with the modifications I had suggested in the last video, it would make a fairly decent, reasonably priced wood stove for someone who's looking for something, don't want to put out the money for the more expensive ones. It works well. Uh, but that wasn't the point of coming out, was it? Now today, it was all about coming out for a specific purpose. So maybe I need to answer that question, or do I have an answer for the question? Did I lose my mind and find my soul? No, not really. 
Too soon, way too soon for that. It's going to take a lot more than one day in the woods to recover from what's happened. But it's a good start. I mean, I feel much better coming out right now than I did when I came in. So, uh, yeah. Normally I end off by saying, and I'll say it anyway, of course, which is, if you can do this where you live, get out and explore, and take that path less traveled, because it will make all the difference. But today I'm going to do the final ending by saying, keep us in your thoughts and prayers, and stay safe. Bye for now.